Hi viewers, welcome to Student's Diary and this is our third tutorial of the glycogen metabolism. In the previous uh, lectures, we had studied about the glycogenesis and glycogenolysis process. And uh, in the, today's tutorial, we will study about the regulation of these uh, glycogen metabolism processes. Uh, we will see that in which circumstances uh, the glycogenesis process takes place and uh, in which condition the glycogenolysis process takes place in our body. When we talk about the glycogen regulation or regulation of the glycogen metabolism, uh, it happen by allosteric regulation process or it can happen through uh, hormonal regulation and the third process that could involve in regulation of the glycogen is the influence of the calcium means the increased muscular activity can also regulate the glycogen metabolism. So first we will look into the allosteric uh, regulation of the glycogen. Uh, when there are increased amount of glucose one phosphate uh, in the body then in that case glycogen synthase will act on it and it will convert it into the glycogen which is basically we can say that that is the glycogenesis process and uh, the enzyme which upregulate this process is the glucose 6-phosphate. If there is an increased glucose 6-phosphate concentration, it will positively regulate this enzyme to convert the glucose 1-phosphate into the glycogen means that glucose 6-phosphate will enhance the process of the glycogenesis. While if we look into the uh, other way around that glycogen can will be converted into glucose 1-phosphate with the help of glycogen phosphorylase enzyme. It means that uh, that glycogen phosphorylase has the ability uh, to enhance the process of the glycogenolysis process. And that glycogenolysis will be allosterically regulated by the glucose 6-phosphate, ATP and glucose. And all these will have negative effect on this glycogen phosphorylase means that if there are increased ATP in the cell or if there are increased amount of glucose in the liver or uh, increased amount of glucose 6-phosphate, it will never initiate the glycogenolysis process. It will never initiate that uh, glycogen. Uh, it will never convert that glycogen into glucose 1-phosphate because these contents are already present in high concentration in our body in the cells and in the cells. So, um, but however, if there is an increased muscle activity and there are increased concentration of the calcium ions and cyclic AMP level, that will enhance the process of the glycogen conversion into glucose 1-phosphate or other way around we can say that will enhance the glycogenolysis process so that more amount of uh, and glucose 1-phosphate is produced because the muscle activity is enhanced uh, and that will be shown by the increased amount of calcium and AMP level and that glucose 1-phosphate will be taken out instead of for in, uh, into this process but rather it will be regulated towards the glycolysis process so that more amount of ATP is produced and that muscles can utilize that ATP. So the second thing is the glycogen re, uh, regulation uh, by uh, hormonal process in the liver. If there are high glucose level in the blood uh, or after a meal the glucose level is increased in the blood that can either will result in increased insulin secretion from the pancreas and that will also uh, result in the glucose transporter uh, to a receptor uh, to express in more amount insulin what will it do that it will enhance the insulin sensitive protein kinase so there these enzyme will be overexpressed uh, and uh, similarly there will increase synthesis of hexokinase uh, and increase production of phosphofructokinase 1 and pyruvate kinase we, if you recall this all these three enzymes are the main regulatory enzymes 
of the glycolysis process. So what will happen is that increased insulin sensitive protein kinase with a few uh, cascade mechanism, it will activate glycogen fast, it will down regulate the glycogen phosphorylase uh, enzyme. Uh, it will inhibit that glycogen phosphorylase activity while it will enhance the process of the glycogen synthase. Uh, so that will ultimately uh, when there is decrease production of the glycogen phosphorylase or down regulation of the glycogen phosphorylase it will result in decrease uh, production it will result in decrease breakdown of the glycogen it means it uh, in other way around we can say that it will result in uh, decrease in reduction of the glycogenolysis or inhibition of the glycogenolysis process while the glycogen synthase will enhance the glycogen synthesis process uh, we can say that it will increase the glycogenesis uh, similarly the insulin effect will result in increase the glycolysis process with the help of all these three regulatory enzyme and uh, that uh, if there is no more atp requirement then that will lead to the glycogen synthesis as well the additional glucose will be converted into glycogen production while GLUT2 will result in increased amount of glucose inside the uh, blood or in the cells so that enhanced glucose will result lead to the enhanced glycolysis process as well so overall the high glucose level in the blood will result in in, in decreased glycogenolysis while it will enhance the process of the glycogenesis and it will also enhance the process of the glycolysis so when the blood glucose level is drop if of you are if you are in a starvation or uh, in a fasting state that will result in, in upregulation of the glucagon hormones high production of the glucagon from the cells and it will result in enhanced uh, expression or production of the cyclic AMP which will result in overexpression or enhanced production of the protein kinase A which uh, basically uh, relay the message downward and it will uh, upregulate the phosphorylase kinase enzyme so that phosphorylase kinase will further act on glycogen phosphorylase it will further enhance the production of the glycogen phosphorylase and it will give you the breakdown of the glycogen so that more amount of glucose is produced and that to cope up the situation of the low glucose level uh, so that message which has been relayed by the glucagon will be modified or enhanced through this cascade mechanism and all these enzymes will be upregulated uh, so it will result in the enhanced production uh, breakdown of the glycogen while um, the effect of that protein kinase a high production of protein kinase A on glycogen synthesis will be inhibitory and that glycogen synthesis will be uh, synthase will be inhibited or down regulated so that will result in low glycogen synthesis or inhibition of the glycogenesis process thirdly uh, that protein kinase uh, when are in higher amount that will uh, down regulate or low production of fructose 2,6-bisphosphate which is a potent regulator of the process of the glycolysis and uh, similarly there will be low expression or production of the phosphofructokinase 1 because these two are both linked to one another so that will not commit towards the glycolysis and so will result in low glycolysis process or inhibition of the glycolysis uh, process similarly that high concentration of the protein kinase a has uh, indirect effect or inhibitory effect on the pyruvate kinase uh, so that pyruvate kinase is also one of the important enzyme of the glycolysis so if it is down regulated that will result in the low pro uh, in the inhibition or low uh, process of the glycolysis so overall the low blood glucose level if in the, it is low amount in the blood that will enhance the glycogen breakdown in the cells 
and it will inhibit the synthesis of the glycogen through glucagon and it will also uh, decrease the process of the glycolysis in the cell. Now comes to the hormonal regulations of the so how these hormones can regulate these glycogen in the liver and in the muscles. So when there are uh, low glucose in the liver, uh, glucagon will release and if there is a type fight or flight situation, an emergency situation, epinephrine will release and it will has effect on both liver cells and in the on the muscle cells while glucagon will release in response to low glucose level and that will has impact only on the liver cells. So what will glucagon do that it will convert the glycogen uh, glucagon and epinephrine will have same effect in the uh, liver that it will convert that glycogen into the glucose 6 phosphate and we know that glucose 6 phosphate is the kind of intermediate which can go either way to the glycolysis or gluconeogenesis so in that case if there is a low production of the glucose uh, glycogen will be converted into glucose 6 phosphate similarly through gluconeogenesis process pyruvate will also be converted into glucose 6 phosphate and from here onward that glucose 6 phosphate will be converted into glucose which will be released into the blood so that the low blood glucose level is maintained within the uh, within the blood in our body uh, while um, the epinephrine have both uh, effect on the liver as well as it will have effect in the muscles and you know that it is the hormones of fight and flight situation so when there is extreme now in demand of energies or atp production that epinephrine will uh, result in uh, degradation of the glycogen in the muscle into glucose 6-phosphate while in this case the glucose 6-phosphate uh, uh, unlike in liver which is converted into blood glucose level here because in the muscles there are a high amount of mechanical activity in the fight or flight situation so that glucose 6-phosphate will be lead toward the pyruvate so that ATP production can happen and that pyruvate will be further led, lead into Krebs cycles or lactic acid production so that more amount of ATP is produced to cope up the situation and more muscle activity is, uh, uh, is initiated. Uh, so what will be the difference between the liver and the muscles uh, glycogen a metabolism with response to these hormones uh, epinephrine of course will be upregulated uh, by response of the muscles calcium and uh, low cyclic amp it will enhance the process of the epinephrine which will further enhance the process of the glycogen uh, which lead to the pyruvate in the muscles so overall the effect of the glycogenolysis and uh, in all these in the liver the glycogenolysis process will be enhanced because glycogen will be converted into glucose 6-phosphate similarly in the muscle the same process will take place that glycogen will be converted into glucose 6-phosphate so it will both have direct effect and um, both these hormone will enhance the process of glycogenolysis means the breakdown of the glycogen in the uh, in both the cells of the liver and the muscles however uh, when we look into the glycolysis process um, in the liver cells uh, because the gluconeogenesis only taken place in the liver cells so uh, here there will be no glycolysis taken place because at the response of the glucagon um, blood, there will be need of the glucose production in the blood so no glycolysis will take place instead there will be decreased glycolysis uh, while in the muscle cells um, that glucose 6-phosphate will be further lead, lead to the glycolysis process because of low ATP so there will be enhanced glycolysis in the muscles as compared to the liver while when we talk about the gluconeogenesis we know that gluconeogenesis take place only in the liver and we know that gluconeogenesis means the production of the glucose so here the production of the glucose take place both from pyruvate as well as from glycogen within the liver cells while in muscle cells there will be no gluconeogenesis 